Mas is the absolute king in automotive communication. This is going to be a practical introduction. My name is Janosch and I build my own CAN networks introducing devices from different manufacturers to each other on the same bus to build my own electric cars. They've driven for tens of thousands of miles. So I just calculated that I must have sent hundreds of millions of messages on the buses that I've built. I'm going to show you exactly what the bus is. I'm going to show you how to read data from an existing CAN network and I'm going to show you what to consider when building your own network. Let's go. What is the CAN bus? It's two wires, CAN high and CAN low. On the one side, you're going to have a 120 ohm resistor, and on the other side, you're going to have another 120 ohm resistor. In the middle, you're going to have loads and loads of devices talking to each other. The CAN high and the CAN low sit about two volts apart, and um, there's a differential signal, so if you send one, um, one goes up and the other one goes down at the same time, which makes it very resilient against uh, noise from other electric devices. Uh, this is why the CAN bus is very popular. The devices on your CAN bus need to agree how fast they want to speak to each other. Uh, that's called the board rate. Uh, typically in automotive, you're going to find uh, a 500k, 500 kilobit uh, board a second. Additionally, the CAN messages are split into the so-called CAN ID and the payload. The payload is about 8 byte per message and the CAN ID also baked in has the prioritization. So a message with CAN ID 1 has got the highest priority on the entire bus and a message with you know 500 or something is going to have a lower priority than that. All right, that's it. That's all the CAN bus is. So how do you get any data out of this. You want to get to a stage where you've got a log file with CAN IDs, payload, and maybe some timestamps all in one file. Additionally, what you should know about is something called a DBC file. A DBC file is a set of rules describing how the payload is turned into meaningful parameters that a human can understand. Now, to actually get data out of the CAN bus, I just connected a Raspberry Pi and I wrote my own code. Other people use something called Savvy CAN. You have to find a solution for yourself. The easiest way to reach that goal is to locate what's called the OBD2 port, OBD2. And typically you will find that in the glove compartment of your car or somewhere hidden in the passenger compartment. If you look at the connector here, it's got like a 12 volt pin and a ground pin. And then here and here, you can see the can high and the can low pin. You can get a dongle for that. And the dongle is really not that expensive. They're like 10 pounds or $10 or something. And you plug that in and you install a bit of software on your laptop. And then you're gonna be able to turn your car on and read the messages that your car speaks. Okay, and you haven't modified the network at all. So that should all be perfectly safe right? You might be in a situation where you're looking for some very specific messages because you kind of found on the internet what device you're looking for or something and you can't for the life of you figure it out. What automotive manufacturers do is they're putting multiple CAN buses in their cars and they might not expose all of them on this OBD2 port. In that case you have to dig a bit deeper and figure out where the other one is. Typically they will separate it into high voltage bus, vehicle control bus and then maybe like a multimedia control like radio control or something like that because you don't want these things to interfere with each other at all so that you would split that out. That's how you get data out of an existing CAN network. If you're building your own network like I did, there's a few more pitfalls that I'm going to save you from. The most common one is you swap the wires. So make sure you really have CAN high and CAN high connected and you don't accidentally swap them around at one of your ends because then you're just going to get a bunch of garbage. The second most common problem is you add too many resistors or not enough resistors. So make sure you have got exactly two resistors, 120 ohms either side, and both of them connect at the same time. If everything is switched off and you measure the resistance in the bus, you should measure 60 ohms. If you measure anything else, you've done something wrong and you're likely going to get in trouble. The third one is you want to make sure all your devices are speaking at the same speed. You want to set them all to the same board rate. If you haven't done that, it's not going to work. If you want to build your CAN bus up from the bottom up, you need at least two devices. This is a mistake that I've made. I had one device and then a secret listener and the secret listener wouldn't answer. Um, you need at least two because uh, one device needs to send and the other one needs to acknowledge that it's sent for the next message to be sent. Otherwise, the same message is going to be retransmitted, 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 retransmitted forever and you're not going to get um, the data out that you really wanted. So add at least two devices when you're building your network up from the ground up. Additionally, make sure you think about bus congestion. You want to calculate roughly how many messages you can send a second and how many you're actually sending and you will leave plenty of room there for retransmissions. You don't want to over congest your network otherwise everything is going to break down. Um, it's going to break down in a way that messages with high IDs are not going to come through anymore. Messages with low IDs are still going to come through. While speaking about IDs, if you're mixing and matching components from different manufacturers, you need to make sure that you really, really know what CAN IDs they're expecting to send and what CAN IDs they're expecting to receive. You don't want any conflict there. Otherwise, you end up in a situation where, you know, your heater turns on your throttle commands for your car. Not a good place to be. You want to make sure you really understand uh, what devices on your network are sending which 
messages and uh, what they actually do to each other. That's it, right? So I've told you what the CAN bus is, I've told you how to read messages from an existing network, and I've gave you some tips for uh, how to build your own network. Just to recap, we've got two wires, they've got 120 ohm resistors on either side, it's CAN high, CAN low, the two wires sit about two volts away from each other, you need to set the port rate of all your devices, typically that's 500k, CAN IDs and CAN payload is what the messages are divided into, the CAN payload is typically 8 bytes. To read data from an existing CAN network, make sure you found the right bus, there might be multiple buses there, you want to get to a stage where you can get a DBC file and you typically would read that through the OBD2 connector or elsewhere where you can access the bus. If you build your own network, make sure you don't swap the wires, make sure you don't add too little or too much resistance, make sure you've got the right board rate, make sure you don't have an ID collision and make sure you don't oversaturate the bus. This is the CAN bus in a nutshell, uh, I hope this helped someone and I'll see you in the next video.